Hey everybody, it's time for our fishy painting lesson. Yay! <laughs> um, hello, hello. It is Thursday, January 7th. Can you believe it? Um, and we are going to be doing some fish today. This can be, you know, whatever medium you want to work in. Um, as I mentioned in Tuesday's um, Zoom meeting, the schedule this month, what I'm going to uh, try to start doing is just establish that Thursdays at 11, you know, hopefully consistently most of the time, Thursdays at 11 will be when I do a live demo in here and um, do the three monthly lessons that are part of your membership. Um, the fourth um, Thursday of the month at 11 would be like a um, um, Q&A. Let's see, I see a message from Trish. No, I don't see a message from Trish, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to try and do. Establish that as a, you know, the time that we do it. So we're going to do uh, like angel fish, tropical fish today. Um, on the 14th, we're going to do coffee pots and teapots. And then on the 21st, we're going to do line and wash. Uh, and that can be different mediums as well. Probably going to do floral to get us started. I'm, I think I'm going to do that one each month. And then on the 28th, we'll do a Q&A recap sort of thing. So here is a quick little drawing I did inside of a sketchbook of a really cute big fish. I found this one on, hi Carolyn. Um, I think I found this photo on Pinterest and I'm gonna show you my iPad. That's very often how I start out when I'm coming up with an idea. I have um, always, I always use reference material. Um, I think that that's what you always want to do. You always want to use a reference. Um, you know, um, why make things up? <laughs> you might be off or wrong in your, um, you know, in, in the art that you make. And it's just so easy to find reference materials. And very often, um, you know, I think, I think that to become a better artist, drawing is really critical. So, um, if you're going to draw, you have to look at something, uh, you have to refer to something, you know. So, <clears throat> you know, you can cheat and you can, hi Trish, you can cheat. Uh, I very often I will use Procreate, um, bring in a photo in Procreate and literally trace the image, you know, you can do that. Um, I did that with this, I drew this in Procreate. And um, I did it to, again, even that cheating is familiarizing myself with the subject. Just going over each line, I become acquainted with the shape of this fish and the way the fins are and the way the scales are, et cetera. You know, um, I actually find that uh, rewarding and captivating, you know, so. I hope I've sold you on using a reference. I know some artists don't use references. Uh, I just think that your art's gonna improve immensely when you start using references consistently and when you start drawing. And um, the act of drawing helps you notice and observe and really see things as an artist. You know, there's always so much more to see in a subject you, you know you think you know what something looks like your brain tells you it's this but really very often it's not what you thought it was so anyway enough about that <laughs> um, I've got several things that I started um, so that you wouldn't be sitting here waiting for drying time and things like that this particular thing I am thinking let's do let's do um, whatever medium you want to use, you know, and you don't have to paint with me live right now, 
but um, certainly you can paint or sketch or draw fish in any medium that you would like. But I would suggest that before you go into an actual finished painting, that you do some studies, that you do some sketches, um, that you just warm up and uh, you know, so I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna start with a warm up, and I did that this morning in, in the free group, the free Artist at Heart community group. I went in there, um, I showed a lot. It's a good video if you've got some time. You can scan through it, you don't have to watch the whole thing, but it, I basically showed my tabaret, which I have over here. I organized it, I painted the outside of it, and I organized and put all of my um, drawing materials in there, all my markers and pens, and I've got a lot, but it's all in there at least. And, um, you know, I talked a little bit about, you know, using a sketchbook. Um, and then I, I wanted to just show them some art. And I, I brought out my pineapples, and, you know, every time I see these, I get, I get kind of re-inspired again by, by the pineapples. And I really started thinking, you know, I want to do I want to do the same thing we did with the pineapples. Maybe I'll do this with the fish, you know, and um, because it's it's just fun. I'm not able to. I remember when we first started with the pineapples. It was much different than when I went. Then towards the end when I was very familiar, I got very comfortable being really abstract. I didn't make pineapples that looked like this at first. Um, I, I was trying to be real realistic and, you know, I mean, I got real graphic and confident and, and bold later on the more, the more I did, you know, and it really was a lot of fun and, you know, some of my these are some of the best ones in here. I love, I really love these, and I haven't done it yet, but I really want to take this to a really large scale painting. I think it would be amazing, like huge, just a huge. <laughs> Here's another one. I just, I think I love the colors. Yeah, yeah, print something out. Good idea, Carolyn. Um, how fun would this be to do this with fish, right? You could do the same thing. Anyway, um, so that's an idea. These were uh, sheets of Canson Excel watercolor paper. I think I had nine by 12, uh, a nine by 12 pad, and I just cut it into fours, which would be um, four and a half by six. And that's a nice size, you know, I think that's what these are. Um, so you might want to do that, you know. The nice thing about that, and if you remember, what we did with the pineapples is we first did watercolor washes like this, and then you let these dry. So one morning you can get up and, you know, when you're, when you're having your art time, this is so easy, this could be your warm up for your acrylic painting session. So grab your watercolors and just do five or six of these. You know, pineapples, fish, hearts, whatever you wanna do, I don't know. Um, and then let them dry. Leave them on your table, let them dry, go on with your day. Another day you can come back and add the black line work in. And here I used a brush ink pen where the ink is already in the brush. Here I just used a Rolling Rider ballpoint pen you know, I kind of, sometimes it's nicer to use a thin line. Sometimes the thick line uh, is better, you know. Um, the more you do these, the more, like this one totally, totally looks cool because of the brushiness of the black line, I think. But anyway, um, and I talked about that inside of the, um, in that video that I did, that live video that I did in the group. So here's what I've prepped. Here's some that I painted. Um, and I used a few different types of paper. All right, so here's what I did to kind of prepare, ahead of, you know, for today. This, the, this is Canson Excel paper. Um, and I just painted a few layers in watercolor. 
here's one where I did some, I used a jelly roll pen uh, and did some doodling. Sometimes doodling is a really nice way to warm up. And then here's, this one is a smooth, um, a smooth watercolor paper. Let me show you this pad. Not a pad actually. So these are loose sheets of uh, Brit Blick Studio Fabriano watercolor paper. Uh, and this one is called Hot Press. So Hot Press just means that it's smooth, which gives you a really nice surface for drawing lines, you know. So some of these I wanted to see what different techniques I could have going on with my line work with my different markers. I've got fine line markers. Um, I bought this set by Derwent. And, um, oh, we're backwards. You don't have to buy Derwent. You could use Microns, you know, whatever you want. All right, so here's the, the, the hot press watercolor paper. Um, I cut this in fours, 20 sheets. And then, that, and then they also sell it in the cold press. You can get this as well. And it, it is an odd size. It's nine and a half by 13 for some reason. I don't know why they have that size, but anyway, a um, couple of these I did with the Canson Excel watercolor paper. That's the real, the blue cover, you know, in a pad. It's real affordable. These are the smooth, the hot press paper. So some of these were ideas I got by looking on Pinterest. Some of these were just, um, is this upside down? Yeah, it goes this way. Some of these I saw on um, nice photos. And I'm gonna show you some of my photos that I um, found. So here's another one I just, you know, I just used my watercolors for this. I used like a, um, not too big of a brush, a size six brush. And went in and painted directly with watercolor without drawing first. And that's a really nice way to see shape. You know, uh, it's a different way of drawing. Uh, it, it might be a little challenging to you, but I, recommend that you try it and I'm going to do a couple in front of you. I'll show you how I do it. You know, um, here's another one, just direct painting with watercolor without drawing beforehand. This one, these are on the, the cold press paper. And these are all just first layers where I would come back in. I can add more watercolor to this. I can add, um, line with my um, these you know these pens these fine line markers uh, or you know or whatever you know I could do a whole range of things okay so I've got these then I've got some that are actually in sketch pads so let me show you those um, so here is a sketchbook this is um these are really nice it's a hardcover sketchbook this is by stillman and burn this paper is called extra heavyweight paper and it's it is smooth though so it is hot press and what's nice about this is that it's it's not a stark white so um but but what i notice is the you know man the, the color really is vibrant against this color paper for some reason. So here is one that I, all I did was I clipped this open. You know, you can get yourself a clip like this. Clip the book open so it doesn't flop around on you. And I, um, you know, I drew, I drew this fish in here. I painted it uh, with watercolor. And, you know, I did a base layer. I went back in and did another, you know, some more layers. Not too much. I didn't really spend a lot of time on this. 
and then I went back in with marker you know I mean it's not it's not the end all be all or anything but it really was fun it, I wasn't I wasn't trying to produce a great product I was getting familiar with the subject and allowing myself to have fun I always did direct watercolor I only painted four or five I get watercolors in February for my birthday yeah that's great that is really great so what I layered on top of this was um, some marker and I've got the um, I'll show you what marker I used I used the Tombow, I think I used this, yeah, Tombow N45. This is from the Tombow set of grayscale markers, and I'll show you what that package looks like. This is a great set of markers. They've got the brush nib on one end and the bullet marker tip on the other end, and you could do your grayscale, your value studies with these. They are water-based, you know. So anyway, I used a dark, I went back in, let me turn the camera down. And you don't have to worry about it reactivating your watercolor layer. It, it doesn't, it doesn't cause a problem. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I went back in right in this area with with this really dark marker, the N45 by Tombow, and then um, did some areas over there. I used a white acrylic paint pen to do the white later on. And I even used a blue, might have been this one, I don't remember, a blue jelly roll pen to outline some of these circles. Um, I also found uh, I think I have a set of copper, I mean of metallic jelly roll pens, and that looks really, really good on here. I did little circles. I hope you can see them. Let me see if we can get this really close. Yeah, right here. That's the copper metallic, so that really looks cool on there. <laughs> so, you know, I was just having fun. Didn't spend a lot of time on this, but um, it was really fun. Okay, um, so that's in this little journal book. I guess I could take the clip out now and close this. I can certainly go back and do more on here if I wanted to. I could rip this page out, cut this out, and stick it on something else, I suppose, you know, if I wanted to, who knows. Um, all right, now, here is a pad. This is, I've had this laying around forever. It's, it's, um, Hold on, there we go. It's Strathmore watercolor paper, which is not my favorite. Um, but you know, it's this six inch by 18 inch pad. It's a very strange size and I never used it. And so I decided to um, do some small fish in this, you know, since it's so weird and just cut them, cut it apart. So, here I used some watercolor and um, painted a couple of angelfish. Here's one, here's another one. I could only fit two on one page. And then I did another page. Um, there's that one, that one, and that one. You know. And then I did, so we can go back in and do more on those. Um, now this is another uh, journal. So this is what it looks like when it's in the package new. It's by Stillman and Burn. It's a soft cover sketchbook. Um, this, this particular one is the, the beta series means that it's cold press. Zeta with a Z, um, which is what this one is, means that it's the smooth uh, hot press paper. And this is a nice thick paper. 
it's not 140 pound it's um it's just a little bit under that it's 270 gm as opposed to 300 so i don't know what that means 270 pound i don't know no that doesn't i don't know <laughs> but anyway um this is a fun little sketchbook um you can you know this is inks you could use anything you want on this stuff really it says dry and wet media watercolor ink you know whatever so um, here's you know when you put watercolor on this kind of paper it it dries differently but I kind of like that look um, and that's kind of cool isn't it the way it dried so it is a little bit different it doesn't have the um, the little texture grooves to grab the pigment the way the cold press does. But you can get really smooth, clean lines on this. So a lot of artists will use this if they're scanning their work. You know, a lot of watercolorists want to scan their work. Here's just a messy, fun, silly thing. Here I was using um, some Pantone, the, well, the, the markers, the uh, Tombow markers. Uh, I think this is something I saw, something like this, and I was so inspired by it that I wanted to draw it. So again, this is, you know, if you don't want to paint, you could actually use Tombow markers to create these fish. That's actually a great idea too. You know, just messing around. It's a fun way to sketch also. You know, maybe some days you want to just take something with you and not bring paints. Well, those Tombow markers with the brush tips are great for that. Um, so then I did a few more fish on here and a couple of bigger ones. And I think that might be it. Yeah, I think that's it. So we're going to do our second layer or third layer on these in just a little bit but first I thought I would go ahead and um, paint just a couple more uh, watercolor fish for you guys how does that sound um, I'm trying to figure out what size I want to do um, maybe I should do a big one So yeah, the 270 GSM means it's 180 pound. All right, so maybe in this one, it's another hardbound sketchbook. Maybe in this one, I'll do a big, like an eight by 10 fish, because I don't think I have that size yet. All right, so let me measure that out so that it would fit on an eight by 10. And um, what well, I, you know, going through the studio and cleaning out stuff, I found some mats that are a little bit messed up. And it's, it's actually really great to have an extra banged up mat laying around like this. So this is an 11 by 14 mat. And um, I can just use this to draw for my 8 by 10, you know. And of course, I want, I want, this is how it, this is telling me the size that it would fit in a 11 by 14 mat. It's actually not eight by 10. It's half inch um, off. So let me tell you what it is for sure. Let me get a ruler. But you know, this is what matters because hopefully you want your painting to fit into a mat. So it's seven and a half wide the opening, the inside opening of this mat by nine and a half. Seven and a half by nine and a half. So I'm literally just gonna take this mat since it's ruined anyway, and I'm gonna use that to um, draw my, well, I'm not gonna draw it totally. Let me grab a pencil. So that I know the area where I'm gonna be painting in. 
I don't have a regular, oh, here. What you could do is, um, I don't know if this is gonna be straight or not, hopefully it is. You could just put a, um, a dot in each corner. Right? And then you can draw crop marks. So don't draw inside of the art, draw it on the outside. Because you don't want that pencil line to show. So this is a little bit crooked, but that's okay. So I'm just adding crop marks and then I'm gonna put tape on this, I think. So maybe this one will have a, a background. So now that I've got these crop marks here, I'm gonna grab some tape and you know, you can use washi tape, you can use, um, although that would be kind of expensive. I would rather use um, masking tape or you can use blue painter's tape. So I don't know what I've got down here, let's see. So I should have tape right here. Yeah, here we go. So I've got this old roll of masking tape. It's not the greatest, but yeah, it's old. You can kind of tell. <laughs> oh, there's some parts here that may not even work. All right, let me grab a different tape. I should probably throw this away. Wow, it's not even sticky anymore. Yeah, I think I'm going to toss this. I didn't realize how old this was. Um, and tape can get so messed up. So sometimes I'll put tape in a, in a Ziploc bag. So this is an artist tape. which means that it's not gonna pull up your paper, supposedly. So I'm gonna put this on here. I think I bought this at Dick Blick. And you can do this in whatever medium you would like to do today, but hopefully you've got an inspiring fish photo, angel fish, tropical fish. Hopefully you've already sketched it in your sketch, uh, your sketchbook. You know, maybe you're a little bit familiar with it from having sketched it. That just makes it all go a little bit better for you when you go to paint it. And I think what I'm going to do is put, make this like a chaos layer. I'm going to, I'm going to put a layer of watercolor down on here. And I'm going to wind up drawing in my subject and painting that in, adding lines. And then I'll, I can always add in a background to separate the subject from the background colors. Does that make sense? Kind of like what I do with my acrylic paintings. Oop, that did peel off. Ooh, it did peel off the paper a little bit. Shoot. So I'm not gonna press it down too hard. Okay, so I've got my tape on there. Put my tape away and now I can um, come in and do some watercolor on here. So grab my palette. Um, I think I'm just going to grab a, like a half inch, um, flat brush, my 
my water in my jar is a little too dirty, so I'm gonna go get some fresh water. This jar, this is like the perfect size, I think, for rinse water. I got this from Hobby Lobby. They st I think they still sell them over by, uh, in the floral department, I, I believe is where it was. You know, when they got all the vases and stuff like that. And uh, it, ha it comes with a metal lid, but it's just, it's just a nice big jar for rinsing your, um, paints, rinsing, rinsing your brushes. So, okay, let's see. What background color do I want to do? Um, really, the fish is going to wind up being this color, and I don't know, for some reason, I'm really into these turquoises and blues, so I think that'll be, that'll be what I do. And um, I'm just going to come in and kind of wet this a little bit. I want this all to be soft soft blends. So this can't quite take as much water as a heavier paper. So try not to go too crazy. And it dries immediately, but it, I've got it started at least. So I'm gonna mix up some color in my palette here. Um, I believe, I'm not sure if this is like a cerulean blue. And I think I was using cobalt. So I'm gonna just start dropping, dropping color in here. I've got a spray bottle nearby too. Sometimes that helps. And I'm gonna grab some green. Actually, I guess I could grab some, some cool, cool yellow. We'll make our own greens. Some artists don't even buy green paint. They, they make their own greens. So I, I, yeah, I'm liking this really nice aqua color I'm getting from this. And you know, this is very similar to like a chaos layer. We're just putting down color. Let's put a you know, warmer yellow and see what happens. Of course, this is going to dry quite a bit lighter. I'm just squirting a little bit of water on there and that kind of gives it a little bit of a mottled effect. See that? I like that. And that looks pretty good. Um, I could probably grab a round brush and maybe drop just a little bit more color in here and there since it's nice and wet. So I'm gonna get some paint out on my palette, mix it with some water in a round brush now, and just kind of drop in a little more pigment and let it do its thing. Give 
can even splatter it a little bit. And maybe I'll just go even use some actual green too. So this is my uh, permanent green. Here is a um, some indigo. So this one's really dark. And then what I have found too is that if I use a uh, fan brush, I get even better splatters. So here's a little fan brush. And um, see that? Look at that. Okay, and you know, you want it to have a modeled effect because this is gonna be the basically the majority of the fish. I mean, I'm, I'm really picturing something like this is gonna be my, it's gonna take up the whole thing. And I want that interesting stuff going on in there to, to represent the, the body of the fish, if that makes sense. So that's the idea there. So we're gonna set this aside now and let this dry. I'll show you a little closer. Um, if you're not doing this in watercolor, you could certainly do this in, you know, inks, acrylic paint, you know, what have you. Just let this base layer um, sit for a while so that it's ready for the next step we're gonna do a little bit later. All right, so let's grab something that we that is already dry. Let me put this mat back. Um, but before I do that, let's let's do a, maybe a little practice of line. You know, you might feel a little bit like, oh, uh, I don't know if I'm ready to come in and draw lines on my beautiful, my beautiful watercolor fish that I made, you know, um, then that's fine. Practice that on your sketch pad. So here's, here's one where I, um, what did I use? I think I used, I probably used like a rolling writer pen, you know, just a regular pen. You know, like a, this is a uniball. This looks like it could have been this. This is a uniball. Um, oh, it has it on the lid. Deluxe fine. Uniball. Deluxe fine. I really love this pen. <laughs> um, and, you know, let's just warm up. So what we're going to do, the reason why we're warming up, what we're going to do is, and so at some point you're going to have some base layers like this where you've painted a fish like this. Now you're going to come back in and draw your lines on there. Get familiar with the tools that you use to make your line work. Um, so I'm going to pretend there's a watercolor here and Maybe, maybe I'll leave that like that, right? So that it's within the view. And I'm gonna pull up a reference. Let me pull up a reference real quick on my iPad. I got my iPad here. You guys can't see it on, on camera, but um, I've got it in my photos. And let me just find, I'm not used to using my iPad for viewing photos doesn't cooperate with me like my phone does. Okay, um, so let me find a reference of a fish to, um, to draw some lines on. All right, so maybe it's going to be 
Um, you know, here's an angel fish I pulled up. And it may not look, well here, so I'm gonna do it on, I think it lends itself more to, well, it doesn't really lend itself to any of these, this fish, but that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna start with the eye. And maybe I'm going to, so pretend there's paint here. There's some, now I don't have to follow the exact um, paint. You know what I mean? I don't have to put my line exactly on that where the paint is. I can make a line go outside beyond where the paint is or, or not. It's totally up to me. So in other words, I'm just gonna pick the areas that I want to maybe emphasize. And this all has even weights. And like, I could literally um, use something like that. This is all a mono weight, one weight of line. It gets a little more interesting when you use something that has different weights, like maybe this, here's a brush nib. I don't know that I would, I wouldn't necessarily use a brush nib to outline one of these, but you could. The, the interesting thing about this is that I can get thick and thin lines, right? Can get thick and thin lines with with a brush like this maybe that would be um, a better look uh, for what I got going on here so um, let's see let me grab a couple of different things to outline with You know, and that's why I put these in these bins like this. I've got microns that are all different weights, but what I think what makes it more interesting, here's one, it's a brush nib. So this is a really nice um, thing because it can get thick and thin. Very, very painterly, you know, so I kind of like that. This is, um, by Pigma, it's archival, and I think I got it on Amazon, but I'm not sure. You can certainly Google this. I liked this, I used these on the pineapples, and I really liked it. So it's, it's remember when we did the pineapples, and um, like here, so here's, I'll show you an example. You know, I've got some watercolor wash down on there, and now I can come in and decide where I want my lines to be. I don't have to follow exactly on each wash. I can, I can change it, you know, I can. So see how interesting that is, that I didn't outline right on the paint. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, 
you can decide exactly where you want to put all those lines. You don't have to dot every center. You can even use different weights, like, so this was that brushing nib, but maybe now I want to use um, something like this. And now I've got two different uh, types of line going on, and that makes it interesting too, right? So that added a lot to it, I think, just adding the black lines. So it's kind of a different frame of mind, I think, when you're doing the, the black lines versus the washes of paint. And, you know, different moods, different days, you'll, you'll be in the in the mindset to do that, I suppose. So um, I love adding the black lines in. I really, I really do. But I haven't done it too much on fish, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable. I got to where I was very, very comfortable with the pineapples because I did so many of them. And I want that, I want that for you. I want you to get really, really comfortable with whatever your, you know, thing is, you know. Um, that you know what looks good, what you like, and what you don't like. And you only know that by doing, doing many of them. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and do this one. And I don't know what I want to use yet, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep my um, sketchbook here so I can try out my different markers and decide what I want to use. I'm grabbing some different things. This is a nice bullet nib. Sometimes that's the best thing to use. So um, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start. So I'm looking at an angelfish, but this is not really an angelfish. Well, I, I suppose I could make this into an angelfish, but I don't know that I really want to. I'm not sure about that. Um, so maybe I'll just make this all black since I started with it. Like he's got a raccoon mask on or something. So see how that just it really adds quite a bit to it, actually. Um, maybe I want to put something like this here. And I think I want to add some white for the eye. So <clears throat> I've got a white acrylic paint pen. You could certainly just come in with white paint. What I've noticed about with this, um, with this paint pen is that you, you got to put one layer and then let it dry. If you keep trying to do a second layer right away, it wipes it, it just kind of wipes it off too much. So then I could also add
you know, white on here. See what I like better. Maybe just dots. You know, let yourself try different things and see, you know, find out what you like. So well, that's cute. I think I want to do um, thin, thinner lines on this one. So maybe I'll go back to my ballpoint pen. And you know, the other thing too is you can always decide to come back in and do more paint uh, anywhere you want on these. All right, let's look at another fish. Just really simple, a really simple line. I don't know that I like that one a whole lot. I feel like I don't have enough pictures of fish up here for me to look at. And then sometimes there's this like line that separates, you know, the mouth area and the line that separates the head area. Very often there's kind of a spine thing going on. I don't know that you normally see black lips on a fish, but why not? <laughs> okay, then here's another one. I'm just going to go do another search for tropical fish. Well, let's see. Maybe we'll do this. You know, I'm not that familiar with fish, so it really helps to, um, you know, have picture open, you know, to look at.
you know, and you can add fins on where you didn't necessarily have any watercolor too. There's nothing wrong with that. So um, let's go back in and add a little bit more watercolor to this one. I think I want to get some yellow on this eye here. That is making my marker uh, kind of bleed just a little bit, but it's it's not too bad. Maybe up at the top will make it a little bit darker, and maybe just a little greener or something. I'm going to add some brown. because when I have these darker uh, colors up here, I'll be able to add some, some white later on. So once I've wet this, I can then, you know, just kind of float some other pigment colors on here. So this is all pretty wet right now. And I'm just going to add, like here, I'm going to put some yellow. Let's get a little orange in there too now. Oh, it got a little dry on me, but... So we're making it um, a lot more interesting now by adding all these different colors. Just want that to soften and blend a little bit more. All right, and then what I want to do, I've got some titanium white. But I think I'm going to let it dry and I'll use a white marker instead. So that was fun. That's fun. Um, you know, I mean, I don't really love, love, love any of these. It's not like I think these are the best. That's okay. I'm building my repertoire. I'm getting myself familiar with this subject. And I'm allowing myself to experiment and explore. It's, it's kind of, this is kind of journal work. So it's your private stash uh, of, of stuff that, you know, you're not necessarily going to um, sell. You know, you're, you're letting yourself experiment. Oh, that's that one. That one's done. You're letting yourself explore and experiment. You have to do that as an artist or you're going to get bored real quick. All right, so let's grab um, some of these now. And we'll kind of do the same thing. Um, 
Um, okay, what do I want to use? What's this? I'll just use this one. So same thing. I'm going to come in here. I mean, you know, mostly what you want to do is add, add an eye, you know, and then they usually have this, this fin here. So I just added the eye, added a little bit more detail. Maybe for that one I would use the gold. Here's a gold gel pen, I think. Well, that looks really good on the eye. Maybe gold lips too. So I know it's kind of hard to see. I'm trying to tilt it so it shows. Oh. Yeah, it's very hard to show that. But the gold, I'm telling you, the gold looks really, really cute on there. Let's see what happens if we just use a white um, jelly roll. That's kind of cool. Now these, the angelfish usually have, let me find one here to look at. Yeah, they usually have a stripe here. Like that, right? And maybe dots are an easier way to represent the fish scales, you know? And then I could come back in and add just a little bit more um, dark blue, maybe some uh, ultramarine blue. Just 
just on this stripe. You know, and maybe out here too. This is a really tiny flat brush. So there I just added a little bit of shading on the bottom part of the fish. Um, so I think you're getting the idea, right? Carolyn says, post it above. Post what above? I'm done. Oh, let's see, you posted something. Let me go see if I can see it. Oh, stupid Facebook. What is it doing now? It's gonna make me log in again? Oh, are you kidding me? I guess I haven't logged in on Facebook on here in a long time. my password for Facebook. I never log in and out. Yeah. Well, Carolyn, I can't see what you posted. Oh, stupid. This makes me so mad, you know? Um, okay. Well, anyway, let's, so you get the idea. You just go in, decide what kind of lines you want to add and, and, you know, layer all that in there. Um, I'm going to go back to this one, the one we started with the watercolor, and it's all nice and dry now, and I want to go ahead and draw something like this on there. Um, so now that I have drawn that fish a few times, I do feel a little more comfortable that I probably could just draw it right on here. You know, you could do it in pencil and then go over it in marker or just go right in and do marker if you want. Um, I think I am. I think I'm just gonna be bold and do um, marker. So. I hope I don't regret this. <laughs> All right, so we'll start right about here. It's off, it's a little bit off, that's okay. I 
Actually, that's not too bad. And then I can add this on here. All right, I don't know if you can see it. And this kind of goes like this. And we'll figure out where this head part is. This fish, the eye is really close to the forehead. And then right about here, it's got this fin. And that doesn't look too bad. Okay. So um, now what I can do is I can paint around the whole outside of the fish. With, you know, with something so that that comes forward. It separates from the background, you know. Um, maybe it would be black, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it would be gray, maybe it would be white, I don't know yet. Uh, I'm going to switch to this N45 marker. And there's just a little bit of like a separation here. It's almost like a little outline thing going on. Okay. And then I could use, you know, something to, um, put all these little shapes in here. And you know, maybe some of them are gonna get lighter. So there is a lot of detail with this fish. It's, as we get over here, it gets darker. So I could layer in another, like a darker wash. With my watercolors, maybe I will. want to get a slightly lighter marker so you start to see that. Who have I got here with me? Who's watching me? And a lighter gray out. Sometimes they fool you. They think they're you think they're going to be lighter, but they're not. This is a little lighter. Yeah, I don't know if I want to paint over this or not. <laughs> I kind of like what's happening there. Okay. 
But you know me with the, the, the dots and circles. I love, I love them. So I think that's why I liked this photo. Okay. Um, go back to the picture. Oh, I'm getting cold down here. Um, let's see, where is it? Here it is. So yeah, there's a lot of beautiful greens. The face is darker. And the tail is darker. So maybe I will do that. Maybe I will get that a little bit darker. Yeah, so let's... Let's create a um, slightly darker face. Oh, hey, Helen. So I'm gonna wet the area first a little bit, and I'm just gonna drop in a darker color. So I'm going to kind of plan the area I'm going to paint, you know, I'm wetting an amount that I know I can handle. Okay, now I'm going to mix up a darker wash. I think I'm going to use this like indigo mixed with a little uh, umber. Drop that in here. That's bringing his face out a little bit more. Once you have an area wet, you can just float more pigment in there. You can just drop more in. And you can make a thicker mixture of paint by adding less water and that will um, give you even richer color. So I'm gonna create a thicker color now because it's almost like this band of super dark right here. Super, super dark. Just kind of dotting it in and I'm gonna let it do its thing. And that's gonna really help the eye pop a lot more, which, you know, we all love eyes, don't we? I mean, you want eyes to pop. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse the color out of my brush and just get this to hopefully blend off. And that's the main thing I wanted to do. I wanted to get that eye to pop out a lot more. I want to do the same thing in the tail area because on my reference, the tail is super dark and I can put light dots on top. You know, that's the whole reason. So I'm going to go over to the tail now and start Oh, my husband is home and he's let Charlie out. Oh, I forgot to wet this part first. But it's okay because this, it, this isn't a huge area for me to try to manage. Um, if you have a really big area that you need to manage, 
um, you want to pre-wet it so that you don't get a hard line uh, on the where you end your painting. Your you know. All right, so let's do this. Now this part I do need to kind of manage a bigger area, so I'm just gonna. I want this to be a gradual blend and just kind of disappear. So I don't mind that I have some color on my brush right now. So now I'm gonna rinse. No paint on my brush and I'm just gonna wet the area right next to it. It's gonna pull that color over, but that's okay. To kind of blend it down this way a little bit. I am picking up a little bit of pigment as I'm doing this and that's okay. And I'm kind of making those circles I put on with the uh, watercolor base marker. I'm kind of making those soften, which I kind of kind of like. They're softening up and kind of disappearing. Okay, so wetting this. And now that I've got all this pretty wet, um, even over here I can do some shading too. Let's get this just a little bit darker. Go back and grab this darker color. Let's get this a little bit. So this way he's gonna have a little form to his body. It's just slightly I'm making it darker than it is on the painting, and that's okay. That's my my choice. He does have a light belly right here, so let's lift that off. Let's keep the belly light. So I just blotted it with a paper towel, and that lifts that color right back off of there. All right. And um, I just want to make this. This is still a little wet. And again, you know, with, with um, hot press paper, you don't have as much um, blending ability as you do with cold press. It just, and again, this isn't a real heavy paper either, so it's not gonna let me do a whole lot. I'll shift this color just a little bit um, of a warmer, lighter blue maybe. So yep, he's starting to have a little bit more form there now. And later on, I will be able to put like light colored dots on this part where it's dark. That's what I want to be able to do. So the fish goes from being um, like yellow green body with dark blue dots to dark, really dark, almost black green, greenish blue body with yellow green dots on top <laughs> you know here's here's the the reference right here let me show you in case you haven't seen it so that's what it looks like that is a really cool looking fish i think the only bad part about the reference is that the fish is pointing downward like that but still usable Oh my goodness, I can't get it back in the mount. Okay, there we go. I dropped everything. So that is a little bit too wet for me to go back in and add my light dots, but that's gonna be what I do. 
to that. And I love how this mask part turned out. And then the other thing is there's this electric blue on, on this fish, which it's, it's almost this color. This might work, you know, it's just a really vivid blue. Yeah, not quite, it's not quite this color. It's more of a periwinkle. So maybe I would mix that with acrylic paint if I really wanted to get that in there. Um, all right, so I'm noticing the background is just a flat, uh, dark color. Hmm. Um, I don't know if I want to change that to tell you the truth. I kind of like the background the way it is. I might just leave that. So um, anyway, now I think what I could do is come in with a round brush and paint inside these little, I need a smaller round, these little uh, shapes here. Got a number two. And you know, you didn't. I didn't really have to use marker for that. I suppose I could have just used a brush like I'm doing now and just do these little strokes like this, you know. It actually probably looks a little bit better. Yeah. That's even the right shape of the uh, of that too. And if the, if the uh, paper is just the slightest bit wet, it actually creates a nice soft effect. I had a blue like that in my fish too. I used my gouache. There you go, yes. Let's see, I wouldn't I didn't know that I could get this softer, pretty effect until I came in here and actually did this. So now that I know this, I kind of wish I hadn't done the 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 marker. But that, that's the reason why you have a journal, is so that you could experiment with all this stuff, you know. And then, yeah, you're right, I could use my gouache, um, which really just means opaque watercolor. I have some titanium white paint that I just bought, and I can make, I can make any of my watercolors into gouache by adding white to it. The colors on the fish is almost a neon sort of color. I don't know how you get that color. Um, sometimes you can get neons by actually using neon paints. There are um, neon yellows, like I would add a, a neon cool yellow. Um, I actually have, um, or fluorescent, like I've got this fluorescent chartreuse. I didn't even think of that until you said that. This is High Flow Acrylics by Golden. So let's say this was really gonna be your subject and you really wanna do a lot of these, then maybe you would invest into a bottle of this, you know, um, you, you, cause this would be great for the, um, 
for the eye too. Now I don't want to mix this up with my watercolor brush or my watercolor palette or anything like that, but I am going to put this on, um, I'll just get a styrofoam plate and another brush. And I don't mind mixing acrylics with, so look how nice and thin that is. I don't mind mixing acrylics with watercolors, um, you know, in a, in a subject um, because they work well together. They really do. Let me grab an acrylic brush here. And I can take this neon yellow. Let's put that on the eye here. And there you go. I've got... <laughs> I've got a neon looking, ooh, I could even put that on here. Check it out. Oh yeah, baby. I'm glad you said that. So look, I'm just layering this on here and look at how gorgeous that looks. Ooh, baby. Some of my watercolor is still wet, so. That right there was still wet. But yeah, this is just from using, um, yeah, this is called Fluorescent Yellow by Golden. But you can even find craft paints, Helen. They, um, oh, and the, the mouth is very bright too. Wow, this works really well with this, this fluorescent yellow. Huh. And then you could all, they also have them in pink. You know, uh, fluorescent pink could, could be used to make probably a little, and you know what, they might even have a fluorescent blue too. I have seen fluorescent blue at times. So that would be worth looking into. I only have... Uh, fluorescent magenta by Golden, and like I say, this fluorescent, it's called chartreuse. Fluorescent chartreuse. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that. That really helped that a lot. That that I like how that looks now. Um, let's see, how can I do the Maybe for the fluorescent blue, the periwinkle, I could try, um, I could try a little magenta with ultramarine blue and white. That's the only thing I can think of. So let me see if I can make that work. And again, of course, this is gonna be with fluorescent paint. I mean with, this is acrylic I'm using here. What did I just do with that plate? So I'm going to use my acrylic brush, tiny bit of fluorescent pink. Tiny bit of ultramarine blue, because ultramarine blue is what gives us periwinkle. And white. Had a glob of white paint over here. Yeah, that might work. Well, maybe it's not that rosy of a color. It's more blue. I don't know, let's see. Yeah, that's like electric blue. That's that's a that's a hard color to get. Let 
let's see. Uh, I didn't make it blue enough. Yeah, I think I would need a fluorescent blue. <laughs> Just, yeah, I don't have any fluorescent blue. I don't want all this white paint to come flying out of here. Yeah, that's a hard that's a hard color to get. No, it it just looks dull. It doesn't look doesn't look as beautiful as it looks on the, the photo, that's for sure. But then again, part of the reason why it's sticking out is because the background is really dark. So, oh well. I, plus, I think I still have yellow in my brush, so of course I'm making a a really ugly muted color when the yellow drips down out of my brush that I didn't clean out. <laughs> yellow and purple, not a good color. But anyway, yeah, who knows if I were to paint the background really super dark. Um, oh well. Anyway, then I wanted to put the lighter The lighter dots over here. You need a smaller brush, really. I hate it when my husband is home when I'm trying to do a demo. Sorry for the bathroom sounds. There you go, pretty cool, huh? Fun, fun, fun. Well, all right, you guys. I think that's it. I think that gives you the idea there. Um, so I hope that you'll try these. And, you know, just keep working on them all week and share them in the group and share them on your social media as you're doing them. And I'm going to use a hashtag like um, watercolor fishies and... Um, or something like that, I don't know. Yeah, I guess watercolor fishies. F W A T E, here, let me write it down. Watercolor fishies. Watercolor fishies. Actually, let's pull up the tape and see what it looks like. I hope it won't ruin the paper. Oh, 
always looks better when you take the tape off, right? Actually, I wasn't thinking what I should have done. I should have painted beyond this area so that it would fit behind a mat. I wasn't thinking. <sighs> oh well. There we go. That's pretty cute. It's not a masterpiece, but it's pretty darn cute. Got a big glob of acrylic paint over here on my table that I want to get off. Well, at least I could soak it. So, um, any questions, you guys? What did you think of this? Helen, it's so great to have you with us. Um, you didn't see from the beginning, but there were a lot of other little, little preliminary things I did, kind of similar to the pineapple study. So if you might want to go back and watch from the beginning. But yeah, pretty cute, pretty cute. And you know, I also have these little guys that I want to go in and do, um, I want to do more to these. But if you don't have any of these supplies, get yourself a few different, you know, markers um, and a few different papers. Don't be afraid of, um, like this one, I really like how this one turned out. I can't wait to go in and paint this one some more, or, you know, add my line work to this one. This is that smooth paper and it just, it handles the paint differently, but it's really nice. Um, this, the lines will be really cool on here, I think. So yeah, I've got myself plenty of additional ones to come back and doodle on. And I can't wait to do that, just like we did with the pineapples. I had a lot of fun when we did the pineapples, you know. And again, here's my, my sketchbook. I went in and did, uh, I went back and did this one with lines and dots. And this one too, I even used a metallic, can't really see it, but I used a metallic copper marker on there. Wish it would show better. Um, but I'll go back in and do the other ones too. So that's it, you guys. Thanks for being here with me. Um, and yeah, the hashtag is watercolor fishies. Let me write that down. Pound sign watercolor F I S H I E S. Watercolor, it's your lunch, okay. Watercolor fishies. I hit backwards. Oh, such a pain. There you go. Watercolor fishies. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.